Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your Spirit Guide message reading for you. For being overwhelmed, overstressed, and having obstacles to overcome, which I feel is so prevalent in our world right now. And, well, always, right? So, whenever you find this reading is when Spirit wants you to have this message, so just be aware of that. And if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously and is all the good things that the YouTube algorithm likes. So thank you so very much. Let's see what Spirit has to say. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels, ooh, okay. And Spirit Guides, Angels. And Spirit Guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides. Okay. So we are crowned with the high priestess reversed. One of the reasons why we're feeling overwhelmed, overstressed, and why we feel like there are so many obstacles to overcome is that we're going through a spiritual awakening and we are fighting it. So your psychic abilities can be, you know, evolving. Your empathic abilities can be evolving. You can be being called a certain way spiritually, psychically. And this is something when the high priestess is reversed, we're like, oh, no, thank you. Thank you. But absolutely no. I have a very certain way that I'm seeing my life going. This is the way that I want it. The veil is being lifted from our eyes. Certain things that we thought were true, certain things that we might have believed in like 150%. We're now like, oh, I question this. You know, what is going on over here? Or you know, what is this? What is that? So just being aware of this is going to be super important because it is a stressful time. And we could be thinking, oh, I'm making something out of nothing. No, if you're going through an awakening, it is all intensified. Your life is intensified. Your emotions, everything just feels like it's a bit more. We then have the chariot coming into play. So if you have cancer energy in your chart, because the, the chariot represents cancer, if you have cancer energy in your chart, if you have cancer energy in your life, that comes through rather positively. This is also a time frame of June 21st to July 22nd. This is us taking the reins, okay? We are taking the reins of our emotions. We are taking the reins of the overwhelmness that we have been through, but the emotional kind of like upheaval that has been in our lives. And as we take these reins, we, we see ourselves. We're like, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. Mamanan is the god of the sea. You know, in the sea, the sea's unstoppable, right? But the sea does what the sea wants to do. So when we reign in the sea, when we mold it into, you know, being horses right here, right? To, to, to drive his chariot, that's astounding. And what we are doing now with saying to the emotions of our world and of ourselves, like, I'm not going to be buried by you, is absolutely astounding. And it brings us then to the page of swords reverse. This is air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is, and if we're born on the cusp of, of Libra, this is also that energy coming through, right? Or if we have air sign energy in our chart, we need to connect with the voice of our inner child, of what we desire in our life. We need to cut through doubts, fears, negativities, hurts, pains, disappointments, and say, this is what I need to say. This is how I need to move forward. We are holding messages from spirit. And we've had these since we were little. And you know, most likely you were, not most likely, all children are spiritually connected, right? Can connect with spirit very, very easily. But this was something that for one reason or another, it overwhelmed you, it scared you when you were small. And so here, finding that voice within that is going to be a bit difficult, Virgo, but it is going to be very important. So there's, there's a sense here of like this knowledge coming in, but it's like, Oh, how do I move forward this way? Right? How do I go after what I want? How do I go after what I need? Like, how do I embrace my voice? Spirit is right there with you, absolutely blessing you. So just be aware of this during this time. With the seven of cups reverse, we are not connecting with our dreams. There's a lot of what we want coming forward during this time. And as we're feeling overwhelmed, as we're feeling overstressed, we're going to be thinking, you know what I need to do? The only thing I need to do is just totally a pull up, like rehaul me, like re reinvent myself, right? And what we're not thinking is, you know what I need to do is to connect with me again, is to ground me, is to see me, is to embrace my power and myself. So with the seven of cups, we've forgotten our dreams. We've forgotten what we've dreamt about, or we've mocked what we've dreamt about when we were small. And it's not something to mock. It's something to sit there and say, well, I wanted to be a superhero or, you know, I wanted 
to fly, right? I wanted, I wanted to save people, right? That's what superheroes do. They do extraordinary things. I wanted to do extraordinary things. And I wanted to not have limits on me because when you can fly, you can go anywhere in the world. So here, even if we think, well, those dreams were silly and they might be, you know, you might've wanted to be a fire truck when you were little, but then again, that could be, I wanted to be a hero. And now it's time to look at ourselves and say, how am I incorporating the dreams of what I wanted into my everyday instead of running away from them, instead of saying, no, no, you don't have a place anymore because they absolutely do. And that's going to be a very powerful thing. We're letting go of the five of wands, releasing in love of the five of wands, meaning that there are going to be situations, there are going to be places that are just chaotic and overwhelming. And, you know, we would have been a part of this once upon a time. And now we're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of your pettiness. I don't want to be a part of your anger. I don't want to be a part of whatever this is. No. And this can make it harder, right? Because we can feel isolated at work, right? We don't want to be a part of the gossip and people know that. It's like, oh, I'm not interested in this. So here, just be aware of this. Be aware of the five of wands is fighting for the sake of fighting. It's usually, like here, if you see it in the upright, it's it's young boys going out and they start off playing with their wands. Like, well, that sounds silly, but like playing with, with the wands, with the staves. And it starts off as good fun, right? And then it becomes something more, something more, something more right? Somebody gets hurt, somebody gets angry, and then it ex escalates and escalates. And we're saying, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not being a part of this escalation without there being, you know, a sane head in the room, right? It brings us to the seven of wands. Our energy has been like a fist. Actually, you will know, like Virgo, you've been ready for a fight. You have been ready for a fight. You've been angry. You've been overwhelmed. Your energy has been like a fist and it's exhausting. It drains you. And then you don't even know why you're drained. It's like, what the heck is going on here? So just know that. Hold your hand in a fist just for a few seconds. It hurts. This hurts. Letting it go even hurts. So when we release this fist energy, when we release this, we're like, oh, oh, how do I stand here? How do I embrace the calm? How do I embrace the peace? It brings us then to the six of wands reversed. It's interesting that we have, you know, five, six, seven, right? Not necessarily in order, we'd have to jump, right? We have first five, then seven of wands, first the five of wands, then the seven of wands, then the six of wands. But we have five, six, seven. And as we release this energy, the, the six of wands is, hey, you have to celebrate yourself. Are you? No, you can always do better. And didn't you know that about yourself, Virgo? You can always do better. You can always push harder. There can always be more. There's always something else to conquer, to achieve, to overcome. Is that healthy? I mean, that might make you very successful. And people live like that all the time. But when are you satisfied? When are you happy? When are you grounded? The Six of Wands is that boss. When the Six of Wands is reversed, I always get the imagery of the boss that comes in and instantaneously criticizes you. You could have done everything right, but they're like, oh, you didn't do this? It's like, well, you didn't tell me. It's like, that's not the point. You know, it's like, well, I thought that was the point. You know, here, it's being able to be celebrated. It's being able to say, job well done. It's being able to see your strength and your power and your tenacity. And the three of of swords reversed is really releasing three major heartbreaks. These are three major heartbreaks that broke our heart. That broke our heart. A parent didn't see us. A teacher ridiculed us. You know, a, a lover walked out on us. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be very small, like the teacher could have ridiculed you and other people would be like, oh, walk that off. That's no big deal. But it was a big deal to you. Somebody didn't play with you, like, you know, on the playground. And it's like, it was a big deal to you. It doesn't matter how silly or trivial it seems to anybody else. If you're looking at things and you're like three, three major heartbreaks, the first three that come up instantaneously, those are your three major heartbreaks that in this time of being overwhelmed, overstressed, and having obstacles to overcome that you are dealing with right now. And you're dealing with those themes. So here it's like, I need to start seeing me. I need to start celebrating me with the six of wands reversed. I need to start celebrating me because I'm coming out of a darkness that we could have been in this darkness for three years or better, right? Or more, could be three months, it could be three weeks, it could be three minutes, it doesn't matter. Darkness is darkness. Overwhelmed is overwhelmed. Let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels. 
and spirit goes oh and if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading put a rain cloud in the comment box below a person will be chosen at random and announced on on sunday i just completely forgot what day <laughs> we announced this on sunday so hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when the winner is announced angels and spirit guides show me clearly here we have celestial we are forgetting for go that we are connected to the stars to the planets to the movement of the tides to all of that we're forgetting it we, we don't see ourselves we as human beings do not see ourselves as celestial beings we don't see ourselves as advanced animals but we are and that might be insulting to some we might sit there and say we're not animals but we are we're we're primates and looking at ourselves and saying i see me i see that I'm affected by solar flares. I see that I'm affected by the change in the moon. I see that I'm affected by comets and, and, and eclipses and, you know, and, and the pressure in the air and, and, you know, even having allergies when, you know, spring starts, you know, or fall starts, like it doesn't matter. Like I see that I am part of the seasonal working of our existence. That is going to be a powerful, that is a powerful thing. And right now we don't see it. It's like, oh, but I need, to ground myself into this earth and see that this earth means so much to me because Virgo, you're earth side energy, right? You are deeply affected and deeply connected to the earth, period, end stop. Let's see what our chakra energy is. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is truth. This is the third chakra. Speak your truth. You don't have to speak it to everybody else. You don't have to sit there and, you know, say, this is my truth as I see it and like, you know, pin it to, to the front of doors, you know, you don't have to do that. But here with the third chakra, it's like, speak your truth, especially to yourself. This is what's true for me. It's kind of like being allergic to something and say, like, oh no, that's not true. Right. I don't break out in hives when I eat, you know, whatever. And yet you're breaking out in hives and everybody can see it. Speak your truth. That is going to be so important and so freeing just to you. You can speak it to others, others that you trust, right? You don't have to sit there and say, tell the truth and then you won't get in trouble. No, people get in trouble for telling the truth all the time. It's like, yes, I ate that piece of candy, right? We yell at little kids all the time. They say, yes, I did this, right? I just watched a um, a little short on, on YouTube about this little girl whose mom asked her, do you have the cat in your backpack? And she said, yes, I do. I'm bringing him to school. And she said, no, you're not, you know? She didn't get to bring her cat to school. She was like five. So here, speak the truth. You might not be able to bring the cat to school, right? It might not fly with everybody, but let it be true for you. Be open and honest with yourself. And let that power guide you forward. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. <laughs> this is the king of pentacles reverse. Earth sign energy. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is us. This is also if we have Taurus or Virgo. No, not Virgo. Virgo or Capricorn in our chart. This is us coming through, right? The king of pentacles, prosperity, success. Everything has to have an end goal. If it doesn't cost enough, it doesn't mean enough. It all has to be interconnected. The king of pentacles will never have enough money. It'll never be good enough. We'll never connect with what we value as much as money enough because you can always push more. The King of Pentacles doesn't say, how is this interconnected? And how can it benefit? How can it grow? How can it achieve? How can it, it succeed? It says there can always be more. It's like a bottomless pit. Be mindful about this energy within ourselves. Be mindful about others who promote this energy within us because we already have a proclivity towards it. We are awakening. The high priestess reverse, we are awakening. And it's painful and we don't like it and we don't want to do it. So we'll pause it. That doesn't mean it'll stop. <laughs> like that's the thing with spiritual awakenings. That's a thing with, you know, coming to the conclusion, you know, taking from the tarot card reader. That's the thing where it's like, oh, crud cakes, this is just who I am because this is who you are. The veil is being lifted from your eyes. And it's like, no, pull the curtains closed. And we can, we can say, you know what? No, I don't want this. And that could be our honest truth. I don't want this. I mean, 
happy to embrace the esoteric, the spiritual with those who want this, but I can't walk this path. And you might need to say that. That might be your truth. That might be the truth that you need to say. Close the door. But here, if you open the door and if you say, I want to explore, I want to see, I need the veil to be lifted from my eyes. And I need to move forward being confident in the feeling of myself, like the feeling intuition of me. That's an extraordinary thing. We're taking the reins emotionally, whether we choose to walk the path of the high priestess or not, that can be irrelevant. Take the reins of the emotions. Do not let emotions overwhelm you, okay? Because we can be drowned by them, right? It's like the sea gobbling us up. Do not let the emotions overwhelm you and do not let us hold our emotions so tight that we never really feel. So it's going to be that balance, right? It's the person holding the, the chariot reins and then the chariot, then the horses just run them up because they're too loose. And then it's the person holding the chariot reins too tight and the horses buck and, you know, and, and pull because you're hurting their mouth. So we need to have that balance. You don't want to hold the reins so tight that the, the horse's mouth doesn't respond. So just being aware of this is going to be super important to us. It's that balance with our emotions. It's that balance with our heart and our soul and our self. We need to listen to our inner child. We need to. This is also air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We can have air sign energy in our life that we find annoying, air sign energy in our personality that we find annoying. So just be mindful about this. If we're born on the cusp with Libra, we can find that annoying. We can find certain things that are being said during this time to be annoying and overwhelming. They're going to be brought in our path by spirit. It's like, hey, connect with you, connect with you. I want you to see your dreams again. I want you to connect with your heart again, to move forward in what you desire. And so when we embrace our heart, when we start to see ourselves, it's like, oh, is that it? Is that it? Is that what I wanted? Is that what I needed? And spirit's like, yeah, it is. So just being aware of that. Slowing ourselves down, saying, let me hear my voice. And we're getting out of the rat race of endless arguments, of, of conflict for the sake of conflict. You know, it almost seems like wherever you look, there's, there's anger for the sake of anger. People are, are anger and outraged and, you know, everything is horrible. It's like, stop it. We're all people trying to survive and we have more in common than we don't. So let us not be pitted against each other. Our energy is tired. And that is something we have to respect. The seven of wands is like, okay, listen. When it's reversed, it's like, I'm not fighting every single battle that comes my way. I'm not being overwhelmed all the time. I'm looking with the six of wands and I'm starting to be able to celebrate myself. Right? We fight all these battles also because we think, okay, the next one is going to make life easier. And sometimes it's just seeing our truth and seeing ourselves. And it's like changing your eyes. It's like, hey, man, you're working really hard. You're doing a great job. Well done, you. Let's see the little brilliant things that we do. You know, a really nice lunch that we eat, which might not seem like a big deal, but you can make yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you can be like me and have that be one of your favorite foods. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a cup of tea. One of my favorite things to eat ever. And here it's like celebrate the little wins. Celebrate the little joys. They can start building up and building up because we're releasing so much heartbreak, so much pain, so much different difficulties and, and, and differing of, of ideas that, that hurt us and, and, and scarred us and shaped us. But we don't want to be that scared person, you know, huddled in the corner anymore. It's like, no. We know what it's like to feel like we were stabbed in the back, betrayed, hurt, forgotten, and left but we're not going to be that scared person anymore. We're just not. It moves us to our subconscious spirit message. Blessed. You are blessed, Virgo. Say it. Believe it. Let it move you because you are blessed. It moves us to our subconscious chakra message, which is abundance. This is the root chakra at the root of you. Virgo is abundance, prosperity, success, bounty. At the root of you is magnificence. And it's calling forward that prosperity. 
Your prosperity might not be a mansion. It might not be the fanciest car. But here, with abundance, it is having a good, prosperous, calm, gentle, beautiful life. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of. This is the fool. We need to be mindful because we don't want people to see us as a fool. We really care about other people's perceptions, which I mean is very human. We're, we're pack animals. We believe in we believe in belonging. We do. We don't have to be like everybody else, but everybody finds their tribe, their place, their, their way of moving forward. With the fool, we are afraid of seeming foolish. We're listening to other people judging us, and we're listening to ourselves judging ourselves. Here's the thing we have to tell ourselves. Every hero's journey begins first with you being called a fool. Were you being laughed at and mocked? I always think of Perseus when he said, hey, you know what? In, in Greek mythology, he said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to slay Medusa. And he was this young, young kid, right? He was a teenager. And people looked at him and said, I'm sorry, the greats have been turned to stone, right? Nobody has been able to slay Medusa. What makes you think you can? And they laughed at him. They mocked him. And he's like, yeah, wait, I'll do it. But how much doubt does that set into you when everybody laughs at you, everybody mocks you, everybody doesn't see you? Now, Perseus had God blood in him, right? The blood of the gods ran through him and he was like, yeah, I could do this. But wait, his father was Poseidon, right? I can do this. But what if you're just a mere mortal? What if you don't have the God of the seas blood running into you? You know, the, the Greek mamanon, right? It's harder. And showing yourself grace, it's hard. When people have laughed, when you told somebody your dreams and they laughed, when they said no and you wanted a yes. And now it's time to say, I don't care if you see me as foolish. I love it. I don't have loved me. And it brings us then to the hangman. It's time to see things differently. It just is. The hangman is seeing things differently. It's finding yourself in a different space. It's finding yourself in a different place. And it's like, oh boy, what's this? Oh boy, what's next? And it's also embracing wisdom. It's the doors opening. And it's the surprise of what's to come. All right. All right, Virgo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in. Exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony. Virgo, may blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.